Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackEnt, and this video is about training for the Digital Rebar Terraform provider. We've recently updated this provider and put it into the Terraform community, so it is very easy to download and retrieve if you need to run any Terraform operations on bare metal or any other type of infrastructure that Digital Rebar manages. This video will show you how to test, run, and use that Terraform provider. And it's very simple. We're going to start from a Digital Rebar system that is already up and running. And we have many tutorials and trainings on how to do that. Even further, I have used our lab modules to spin up some labs that I can use as the source of machines for the Digital Rebar provider. Unlike a cloud system, the Terraform provider for Digital Rebar uses existing machines in Digital Rebar which are defined as pools. And for this demo, I have set up two pools already using our cluster system. One is a default pool and the other is the Terraform pool system. And each of these has six machines in it. You can see the, the list here, very clearly named. And I've set it up uh, using different icons so that we can see which pools they're in. The default pool is actually in our default pool. And you can see that I've labeled this here. The Terraform pool is in a pool called Terraform pool. We're going to be working our way towards using that as our primary infrastructure model. And I'll explain how pools work as we get a little further into this process and why that is the mechanism we use for the Terraform provider. To get us started, we're using the Terraform provider from the registry. And in this case, we can find this is the RackN Terraform Digital Rebar Provider. And we can start with the very simple provider definition that we have on the system. I'm doing that, I'm just gonna copy that over here, save that digital rebar terraform onto, uh, my, onto my local system, and then jump over to our command line utility with the same directory where I can cat the digital rebar terraform file and start running from there. The other thing that you'll notice in, in this is that we have set the required providers to digital rebar and source rack and DRP that pulls it in automatically. And then running a Terraform init will make sure that the system has all has that plugin locally installed and ready to go. If I go ahead and jump a little bit further and do a Terraform plan, what you'll see is that it doesn't actually understand where to find the, the digital rebar endpoint. So we're gonna need to uh, assign that one required parameter into the system. So let me pull back over here. In our provider, we're going to have to specify an endpoint. Excellent. And my endpoint here is uh, very easy to find right there. That is my endpoint location and address. And you can see if we look at the documentation here, it'll tell us what that, that that's a required endpoint. The other thing that I would suggest you do is uh, Digital Rebar's documentation also has Terraform provider. And you can see we are now at 4.11, soon to be 4.12. We have been supporting Terraform operations using pools for a considerable amount of time. So this is well-baked functionality. Uh, and it walks you through exactly how all of those pieces and parts work. You'll, one thing you'll notice is that the credentials that are required to run Digital Rebar, the RS key definition, are actually uh, brought in automatically, but I could also define username and password for the system if I wanted. So back to our Terraform file, we need to put that endpoint into the system. Excellent. And once I've done that, I can actually run my Terraform plan and it says it's ready to go um, and no plan changes are needed. The reason it's telling me there's nothing to do is because literally there is no machine definition section yet uh, for us to, to ask for machines. Let's go ahead and, and do that. We can see that in the docs over here. There's a sample section. This is our definition. If we scroll down a little further, we actually see a pretty robust definition of all of the pieces and parts needed. Here, what I just need is a digital rebar. Uh, machine definition list. There's actually well-defined settable values. I'm going to leave all that blank, keep it very simple for now, and we'll build that up over time. So if I provide this uh, one random node machine, that looks great. Um, 
And if you, if you watch, I don't need to actually provide any additional materials into this system for it to do the correct work. It's going to actually assume pool equals default. I have a default pool defined and it will pull that out. I'm going to put in pool default just to make things a little bit simpler. Here's my digital rebar system with my default pool. Let's see if I can get all these systems in at the same time. So I'll slide that over, squeeze in a couple of things here so we can watch the operations work. And here we're going to go ahead and we're going to say Terraform apply. And the operation here is not happy. Uh, apparently I defined my URL incorrectly. That's fine. I did. Excellent. That should help. Take a second pass at this. That looks good. It knows it's going to make some changes and we're off and running. Now, if I come back over here, you'll see that this default pool system is already going through a allocation process. It just picked the first one in the pool and we've got uh, some operation uh, going. Green light here means we've checked this machine out. It's allocated. And it's worth taking a second now to explain how pools are operating. So literally we have built a pool allocation process into digital rebar where you can check a machine in and check a machine out. That allows you to ask for a machine from a pool without having to specify exactly which machine to get. Now the provider does support filtering and other advanced criteria so that you can select specific machines based on your needs. But if you provide a pool, you can ask for one or more machines from Digital Rebar and it will give you the uh, machine out of the pool based on your filter criteria. Effectively, give me a machine, very much like what a pool does. Uh, the reason why that's important is otherwise you would need to know exactly which machine to get from Digital Rebar or do a search and check. The pooling system allows you to eliminate that process altogether. Uh, and there's a couple other benefits that we'll get to as we go through this process. And I'll explain it now um, because I'm going to go ahead and do a destroy to release that uh, system. Terraform is going to confirm it. And you'll notice what's going on in the background over here is we are actually running a workflow automatically based on that destroy operation. This is another important aspect of pools. When the machine gets allocated or deallocated, we can specify exactly what behavior we want to happen during that process. So the check in or check out uh, allocation actually includes a workflow operation on the machine. That would allow you to position or prepare a machine. It would allow you to install SSH keys, which is one of the options in the provider, um, or do other work before the machine is handed over to Terraform. And equally important, when a machine is released from Terraform, you can run a recovery workflow that allows you to put the system back into a pristine state, reboot it, scrub it, reinstall it, uh, delete all keys or credentials, basically make sure that the machines are ready to go back into circulation. That ability to have a pool with workflows on different uh, in, in and out operations is essential to being able to provide the type of cloud-like behavior that Terraform expects. So in this case, we've kept things pretty simple. If I wanted, I could go a little bit further and I could start doing things like adding a count. I want four machines out of that pool. That sounds excellent. Come back over here. Let's get this out of the way. Come back over here. Now do they apply again? Oh, I'm in the provider block. Sorry, probably watching all that stuff going, ah, oh, Rob, don't do that. All right, in the, in the resource block, I've said count, apply again. Excellent. And now you'll see very quickly, I've got four nodes coming, pulled them right out of the pool, and that looks fantastic. So we're going through the process. These machines are going to get allocated, and that uh, process is working really well. Good. Let's do this and destroy. It's the exact same process. All four machines come back. If I change the count, I would just get the Terraform to do the right thing and give me the deltas on the count one way or another. So very typical and the purpose here is to actually give you exactly what you expect from a Terraform provider. If I was to switch the pool to our Terraform pool, pool, 
excellent. Say count again. We're going to run the same process this time, but what you'll notice this pool has not been defined and we're going to walk you through how to define that pool. If I terraform apply here, those machines go right through the process. Uh, we haven't yet defined a allocation or deallocation workflow. And so they're going to go through and immediately be allocated to the pool with no additional work. If I change the, the account to two and hit apply, Terraform is going to do exactly what you expect. It's going to re recognize that two of those machines aren't needed, release them. And now the pool only has two machines available. We're going to go ahead and do a full destroy on this to release the uh, the machines. That sounds great. Now we have our, our pool is fully uh, released. I'm going to show you one or two advanced things, but fundamentally this is the Terraform provider. What we have shown you is the ability to use Terraform to get machines. Um, you will get back the IP address of the machine if, if one has been assigned. You'll get back, you can set parameters and profiles um, and actually do a full control flow of the machine. It's super important that you're able to do all those that, that work in this process. Now, if I go over into our pools definition, what you'll see over here is that I have defined that default pool and I've created allocate and deallocate workflows. This is just load generators that create some time. The Terraform pool exists, but it hasn't been defined. So I'm going to go ahead and define that Terraform pool. And this is where I could select our load generator. I'm going to select load generator for this uh, allocate and deallocate. That looks great. So here's allocate and release. We also have the concept of adding and removing things from pools. So you can also automate actions that get, get done when you move machines around between pools. Uh, and those can also be allocated. I'm going to go ahead and give these, um, let's see, is airplane a valid icon? No, it's not. Uh, paper plane. There we go. Give that a nice icon. That looks good. This will make it easy for us to identify the pool. And now that we've saved this, you'll see that we have allocate, deallocate. We could also add parameters and profiles, literally uh, drive configuration onto or off of the machine as it's uh, entered or removed from the pool. So this will allow the pool we've already created to then add that additional step. So here we'll go back, set this up to say four. And what I, the other thing I want to do, let's look over in the documentation here. You'll notice here I can pull machines out, get some information out. I'm going to add that to the plan, just an example. Just like you'd expect to be able to do, this is straight out Terraform. Um, since I have multiple machines in there, I have to ask for a name. I have to give it an index number. That looks really simple. Jump back over here. Let's check our machines chart. If I come back now and say terraform apply let me clear this so you can see it oops terraform apply now you can see that not only have are we pulling those machines but we're actually going through the process of identifying um, the they're in transition for the pools that's why the icon's not there and we'll see that icon turn green as soon as we've got the them allocated into the process and Digital Rebar has, we haven't been showing you all these pieces because uh, I'm trying to focus on the Terraform piece, but there is actually a list of pools and you can see exactly what the availability is for the pools and how things are going. Um, I can also in the pool itself, I can look at the number of machines and see how they're allocated and move them between different pools and, and take operations. This is a fully uh, built feature set out of Digital Rebar. If I come back in and was to ask for, say, 10 machines, something we don't have in the pool available, you will get error messages back from Terraform. Um, it's going to try to make those allocations. And you'll find, see, it's, it doesn't have to do the first four. It's just adding the extra ones. But that allocation request is going to uh, fail partially. Um, the ones that it can allocate, it will. And the ones that it can't. Are going to fail with very clear you'll see very clear allocations it's telling you um, could fail to get the minimum requested number of machines in this operation uh, and that's pretty much uh, it there's a couple of nuances that are described in the documentation uh, where you can come in and 
uh, add in filters, add parameters, profiles, add in your authorized key, or have a timeout to make sure that you can you don't Terraform doesn't wait too long for the system. But by and large, uh, just like any other Terraform provider, we've worked to keep this very simple, uh, and the operations are straightforward. Jumping back over here, watching the machines get destroyed, you can see them going through the process. One thing to note before I wrap up this video is that while the Terraform provider is simple, you still have all of the critical control, visibility, operational uh, actions of what's going on in the system. So just like any normal digital rebar operational experience, let's go through this again and I'll show you. You have the benefit of being able to watch exactly what's going on in the system. Anything that's going on here, you can go in and watch the activity, see the job logs, get live actions, uh, be able to support operations behind the scenes for Terraform. It's one of the things that's very important to us about how these uh, processes work is that any operator using the system can actually observe exactly what's going on, manage and control how these operations take place. And so it's possible to go in and if something's not working correctly, see exactly what's going wrong, fix it, put it back in the pool. You can actually remove things from the pool and reallocate. Um, you have full operational control behind the scenes. There is no uh, black box operation. It's, it's actually a very uh, transparent and easy to use system. And the pooling mechanism is not limited to Terraform. We have a full API and CLI that allows you to drive these pool behaviors uh, through any system. As a matter of fact, some of, <laughs> some of our customers, after learning how to use the Terraform provider, um, figured out that it was actually just as easy to make requests for the pooling API directly and um, have decided to have a more controlled direct API. No matter how you want to do it, uh, using the Terraform provider with Digital Rebar is a simple and easy way to take advantage of some of our most powerful features. If you have questions, please ask us. Uh, check this out. It's super easy to play with. Um, we have labs that will help you create pools, manage pools, create clusters and manage clusters, all the prerequisites you need. And you don't need any bare metal hardware to make this work. The demo I'm using right now, all these uh, clusters are built using the context broker, which uh, runs in containers on the system. So I didn't actually need anything except a simple digital rebar endpoint to run the demo. Um, and I could also do this with cloud or virtual resources just as easily. They're literally any type of machine in digital rebar can be used uh, to run this very straightforward Terraform provider trial. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing from you in the future.